Hello, in today's video we're going to be taking the arcade controller that we built in the last video and try to connect it to my Raspberry Pi. So let's get on with it. Roll titles! <laughs> Hello, welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. So in the previous video of my arcade build project, you saw me create a wonderful arcade controller and uh, well, here it is. <laughs> Look at it in all its reflective glory. And uh, yeah, while this bit is all sort of pretty much done and dusted, the other end is not. Now, these are all the wires for all the switches that are in the buttons, but we need to connect them up to something in order to actually use this as a controller. Now, I'm going to be plugging this into a Raspberry Pi because I'm going to be using a bit of emulation in my arcade machine build so I can play a wide selection of games. Now, the final finished arcade machine will actually be able to play proper arcade boards, well, that's the plan anyway, but because arcade boards are so rare and so expensive, I thought I could use emulation as well so I can play a whole multitude of games. So uh, yeah, we need to get these very analog controls into something digital that the Raspberry Pi will understand. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, last week was a horrible week for this project because I thought rather than just sort of show me struggling and trying to work out how things work, if I tried a few bits and pieces and worked out what worked and what didn't, then I could produce a very nice video for you without too much head scratching and confusion. And um, yeah, I've spent pretty much every single afternoon last week scratching my head, getting confused and getting very upset. This is the Raspberry Pi that's going to be in the arcade machine. I've done a video on setting up a Raspberry Pi and building one before. Um, I'll stick a link to it in the description. Uh, I've got another one with Home Assistant on and uh, that's what that video is all about. But yeah, this is a sort of standalone Raspberry Pi ready to be used. I just thought I just need to get the emulation software, get another little bit of hardware and uh, put it all together and it would work fine. I was wrong. So basically I bought this and this is an Arcade Forge Pi 2K Strike 2 player. And it's actually quite simple how it works. The thing is with a Raspberry Pi is it has USB ports on it, um, it has HDMI ports on it, has an audio output, has USB-C for power input. The only other way of connecting additional things to it is through this connector here. And this is called the GPIO port. And you can actually hardwire arcade buttons to this and it should work. Now, I thought rather than hardwiring hard directly onto the connector, I would use this board, we'll plug straight onto the port and it provides screw terminals for all our connectors, which is awesome. So um, if you look at the text on there, it's got up, down, left, right, blah, 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 buttons for player one, player two. It's perfect. And it's also got a built-in audio amplifier as well. So it can power the audio in an arcade cabinet. And I thought this would be all I needed. And um, yeah, that's, that, was, that was just complete nonsense. I tried so hard getting this to work. I spent hours reading forums, looking at old posts and things like that. And, it didn't seem to work. And Recal Box, which is an emulator, which we'll talk about in a moment, is meant to be able to see this out of the box and it should work. And it did partly work. I could get the joysticks to work, but I couldn't get the buttons to work. And uh, yeah, I still want to use my Raspberry Pi, but I need to use something different to interface my analog controls with the digital nature of this Raspberry Pi. And I think I have the answer. And that is the Ultimark iPack. Now you might think that this Ultimark iPack looks very similar to what I just chucked away. And you'd be right, it is. It's got all the connectors for the arcade controllers on here. And it's even got additional headers so you can plug in spinner balls and analog controls, which is awesome, but it works in a different way. Now this is a keyboard encoder. And basically when you plug it into a Raspberry Pi or a computer, 
that machine sees it as a keyboard and you can use software to tell it what button press corresponds to which key and because of how it's set up there's no lag or anything like that it should just be like instant I'm going to use this instead now as well as pretending to be a keyboard it should pretend to be a game controller as well which a lot of the emulators are set up to understand from the get-go so I don't even have to mess around hopefully and pretend that this is a keyboard on the Raspberry Pi I can just set this into gamepad mode and it will think that this is a two-player gamepad and I can just connect up all my controls configure the emulators and off I go and that is what we're going to do in this video hopefully because of all my messing around with this last week I actually did a little bit more investigation on some emulators that I think I want to run on my Raspberry Pi and really there are two main emulators that most people use one of them is RetroPie which I've had a look at and once you've got it working it's quite user friendly and all kind of works pretty well but the actual setup of it I did find to be a bit of a ball ache and there's another one called Recalbox and that seems to be a lot more user friendly out of the box you can just download a copy of it burn an image and it will start up straight away and then you can sort of pick around and do a bit of configuration now I think at the heart of them both of them run similar software I just found that the recal box interface and general setup was a lot quicker and easier now the thing is both of those emulators don't just emulate arcade machines they can run old console games as well so theoretically in this arcade machine I'll be able to play Super Nintendo games I'll be able to play Mega Drive games I'll be able to play Game Boy games you get the idea there's a lot of retro games that you can run through the one single emulator but the one I'm going to go for in this video and the future videos will be Recal Box. now I might step into RetroPie or another emulator maybe in future if you've got any thoughts on emulators for the Raspberry Pi then please do put a comment below oh you might have noticed that I'm wearing some new merch look it's arcade themed and uh, got a little Kip Hakeslo on the sleeve if you want to buy one of these then I'll make sure the link is in the description and I might be able to put something pop up there as well but yeah get one come in a range of colors they're mostly light colors and uh, yeah it will help support the channel in theory what we've got to do now is get this plug it into my computer and use the software to put it into gamepad mode and then we can install Recal Box on the Raspberry Pi with this plugged in and um, hopefully control the games on the Recal Box via this that's the idea anyway so uh, yeah let's go over to the computer and get this plugged in and see what it does okay so I made it so you can see my screen and I've got the iPack software all loaded up and ready to go and at the moment it's saying no board because I haven't plugged the board in so on the board we've got this mini USB socket and uh, that just plugs in with the supplied cable and hopefully the software should recognize it ah there we go how cool is that so you can click on each input and tell it basically what key it should be assigned to and also you can do a shifted version as well so with a hot key pressed down it becomes another key if that makes sense so um, that's pretty smart so at the moment it says board is in keyboard mode we don't want that we want it in gamepad mode so how do we get it into gamepad mode so much for not wanting to spend the whole video looking stupid and getting things wrong okay so I'm just gonna speed through this next bit because there's about 20 minutes of me being very confused and not understanding how this works but um, yeah at the end I make a bit of a discovery and uh, that's basically by reading the manual so uh, yeah always read the manual folks it helps so it turns out that you can't just use that software to switch this into the gamepad mode you actually have to put the buttons in and do sort of button presses to put it into the gamepad mode 
which is a bit annoying. What we need to do now is get the Recal Box software onto the Raspberry Pi. So let's show you how to do that because I definitely know how to do that. So on the screen now, we've got the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is a bit of software that downloads images of Raspberry Pi onto storage and allows you to boot your Raspberry Pi with that software. So we'll choose the operating system we want. So we want Emulation and Game OS, and we want Recal Box, and we want it for the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna choose the storage. There you go, it's detected my SD card that's plugged into the computer. And we just click right. Uh, it will erase all the data on the SD card, that's fine. And it's currently downloading the software and installing it onto there. There we go, we just need to remove the SD card from the reader and the software is all installed on there and ready to boot up on the Raspberry Pi. So I guess what we've got to do now is get our iPack 2 wired up to our controllers and then we can go from there. So let's hop over to that side. So you might remember from when I was making the controller, I made a wiring list so I knew what all these colors would correspond to once they were trapped inside the enclosure. Black is my ground wire and that goes in the ground screw terminal at the top here. Now the next one is right, and that, according to my color chart, is plain orange. So while I'm doing this connecting up, let's speed through it a bit and give a shout out to all those people who've joined the channel. Remember, joining the channel helps support it and allows it to grow and uh, yeah, you get some benefits too. So first up we've got those kit fans who are Matt Lovey's JRC Electrical for the Burbs and Mark C. Then we've got those kit early birds who are Roberta Grothamson, Dean Ball, Sean at Cable Smith Electrical, Wayne's World, Tim Salt and new is Sorcerer Stan. He helped me out in the Fix It Finding video. Thank you so much Stan and welcome along. Then we've got those lovely, lovely kit lovers I love them too. They are Richard R. Blaster, Bella Webster, Lawrence, and Stez Sticks Flippin' Fix. And then finally, we've got our amazing, gorgeous kit nutter, Becky Becky Boobar. Thank you so much, Becky, for your continued support. Anyway, on with the video. Okay, so we've got it all wired up. I think it all looks okay. And uh, we've got our Raspberry Pi here ready. So I'm gonna put the SD card in the back of it. So we just need to plug the keyboard encoder into the USB socket and I think maybe I'm going to plug in an actual keyboard into the other USB socket because I've got to enter things like my wireless password and stuff like that during the setup and it's just a lot easier using a keyboard. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back over there again and um, it means I can record the screen output and show you what's going on here but I'm kind of hopeful in a weird way. Yes. <laughs> I'm wearing different clothes because it is a completely different day because this video I think is cursed. So um, basically I am Kip in the process of editing the video and um, I realized that a whole bunch of the screen recording didn't actually work. There was me talking to the camera like this. Everything I was talking about just wasn't working. And I thought about going back and reshooting just the screen recording bit and try and make it all match up, but no. I'm just going to redo this bit of video now, basically. <laughs> we will cut back to Kip from the past in a little while, but yeah, this fundamental big startup bit was all gone. So I've got to do it all again, but hopefully this is all working this time. So basically I've got everything plugged in um, I've just got to put power into the Raspberry Pi. We're going to boot into Recal Box for the first time and configure our arcade controller. <sighs> Will it work? I'm not feeling hopeful, honestly. The rest of the video, oh yeah, you'll see. There we go, welcome to Recal Box. So now this is just doing like the final stages of installation and it's gonna give us some sort of instructions on to how to navigate through the user interface 
and everything like that. It's got all these features, which are just awesome. Up to 10 players on the same console, that's mad. Hundreds of compatible controllers, we'll see. And look, this is showing you the interface controls. So we've got to basically make our arcade controller map to this so we can control the interface itself. Recal Box supports over 100 systems, but only systems with games available are displayed. So there are some inbuilt games for, they're sort of games that the developers have kind of like handed over a ROM for. So these, the ones that are actually included on there are actually all legal. ROMs are a bit sketchy. I'll, I'll talk about that later on in the video. Well, past Kip will. So yeah, we're just having a little look at the features as it's booting up. Will it work though? <laughs> that is the question. Okay, and yes, you can do shortcuts during the game. So you can hit, hold the select button and do all those things. So that's good. And there we go, we can add ROMs with a USB drive on the SD card, or you can connect over the network to do it, which I will show you because I've already filmed that bit. Here we go. Now by default, the iPack 2 is in keyboard mode as you remember when I was faffing around with the software on the screen. So we need to put it into the joypad game controller modey thing. So to do that, we have to hold down our one player start button and our second button for 10 seconds. And that will make the light on the iPack flash. And it should acknowledge there that the iPack is recognized. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. There we go. It's flashing and we should get a notification. There you go. Yet my iPack 2 has been plugged in. It's not configured yet. Okay, so I've just pressed a button on my controller. It says configure input, two gamepads detected. Perfect, because that's one player and two player, but we only have one player at the moment. Hold a button on your device to configure it. Um, so we'll press one of the buttons. There we go. Right, so now we've got to tell it basically how all of these controls map to what it's telling me on the screen. So up. See, it's cursed this video. It recognizes that the controller's there, but does it recognize my button presses? It does not. Right, and this is why I plugged in a secondary keyboard just so I can like quit out of menus and stuff and try and work out what the heck is going on. Right, let's change the driver, see if that makes any difference. Don't know if it will. So we're back to where we were. Hold a button. It's recognized a button. Go up. Nope, nope. This is so frustrating, honestly, honestly. Right, let's try and use a software driver. Configure a controller. Okay, hold down a button. Honestly, this is mental, isn't it? Why must you forsake me? Right, actually, do you know what? I'm just gonna double check that the old keyboard isn't making a problem. Okay, right, up. Honestly, this is, this is so annoying and frustrating. Right, I'm gonna reboot it. You know, turn it off and on again. This, this is this is what my life has been. <laughs> Just like going, yes, it worked. Oh no, it doesn't. Like, why why does it recognise that the controller's there? Recognise the button press to take me into the configuration, and then just go, oh no, no, that's not right. Honestly, man, I think you can turn all this kind of flashy intro stuff off. I've not got that far yet. Configure input, will it let me configure input now? Let's hold a button. Oh yes, you recognize my buttons. I honestly don't know how to make this work. This is just stupid. Right, let's just try disconnecting the keyboard. Plug it back in again.
Like, it, it lo loves the old keyboard. Loves the old keyboard. Oh, now it's just restarted itself. You know, obviously. See, look, there we go. It's just literally started working. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It literally just done nothing different. But look, we, we're making progress. A. B. X. Y. Start. Select. Left one. Right one. Don't have those, but you can have, have lots of buttons. So if I... this. Oh, yeah. Right, hotkey is important. So hotkey has to be select. There we go. <laughs> like, I didn't do anything different. It just suddenly decided to work. Okay, but yeah, here's, here's the interface. All the different consoles. It's, there's just so much on here, which is amazing. I mean... I might thin it down a bit in the future and maybe just have certain things on here. We shall see. What we need to do is get it onto our network. Now, I have. you can either do this one of two ways. You can either go and configure a Wi-Fi network by going into the menu. There you go. And then you can go into network settings and turn on the Wi-Fi and you can connect your Wi-Fi network. I've actually got it plugged in via Ethernet and it's just joined my network automatically. It's easier to install the ROMs using the web interface. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand back to Kip in the past who is about to install some ROMs using the web interface. So uh, yeah, I just apologise for how cursed this video is. It's stupid. Okay, so now on my screen you can see the Recal Box web interface and to get to that I've just gone to the IP address of my Recal Box on my network. So in my case it's 192.168.071 and we've got the interface and the interface allows you to do some configuration and also add some ROMs, which are the games, onto the Recal Box. So, I'm just going to put a couple of arcade games on there. The legality of having ROMs is a bit of a grey area. Um, I'm not going to tell you where I found these or how you can find them, but if you're looking for, I don't know, say, main ROMs for Raspberry Pi, you probably would find them eventually yourself. So, um, yeah, so we're in the interface. Let's go to ROMs. And we want to go into MAME, I think. Yep, MAME. And then we need to upload ROMs. Actually, must stop emulation station before editing ROMs. So we'll hit that button, stop. Right, so let's upload the ROMs. Drop here the ROMs to upload. So I've got a couple of favorites. There we go. So those now should all be on my Raspberry Pi slash Recal box. So um, let's start the emulation station and uh, swap back to that. So now we use our controller. I love that it works so well. And then go up to main, which is our arcade emulator. <gasps> They're there. Um, okay. So these are some inbuilt games. Um, I don't know what they are. Let's try a bit of Pac-Man. Is this gonna work? Go on. Oh, okay. That didn't work. Maybe let's try Frogger. Oh. That's gone very bad. What about a bit of Space Invaders? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, I put the ROMs onto my uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, tried firing them up and they didn't work. Now, Recal Box actually has some built-in ROMs that are sort of default games and freeware that you can use to test out each emulator, or pretty much all the emulators, and even those weren't working. Now, it seems like somewhere, somehow, 
the recal box configuration was damaged. You know, I might have looked at it slightly funny. So I had to literally start again. I had to reinstall recal box and reset up the controller and then reinstall the ROMs. And that's where we're at. <laughs> so we're back into recal box and hopefully we should have some working games. Let's see. Let's play a bit of Pac-Man, my all-time favourite. Will it work? Yes! There we go, we've booted into Pac-Man in Recal Box. Oh, that's so good. Now, it's got this sort of weird um, screen bezel around it, which I'm not really a fan of. I just like seeing it. I mean, really, it should be on a rotated monitor. Now, hopefully, if I press this button, it should insert a coin. It does. All the coins. Right, ready? Yes. Now this perhaps isn't a very good test because um, apart from the start and coin buttons, it doesn't actually use any buttons this game. But the controls are just working perfectly. They're utterly flawless. The joystick feels like the arcade version is lovely. Ah. Right, so I think I need to like do a hotkey or something to quit the game. Yes. Um, close the content. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you can actually save the state of games and resume into them. So if you're playing a game for ages and you have to stop, you can actually save it and then go back into it, which obviously you can't do in a traditional arcade machine. Let's try another game. Let's try one that needs some buttons. 1942. Now this is a shoot 'em up game and I remember playing it in, a, in an arcade when I must have been maybe about 11. I mean, it's from 1984. So let's insert some coins. Yes, all good. Now this is a shooting game, so I'll have to use some button bashing. Right, okay, so that one makes the plane do a flip. There we go, look at this. Oh my word. Oh. Yeah, as I say, I don't really like the sort of bezel thing around the screen. There's obviously some sort of configuration option that we're going to have to get around. Yes, look at this. Oh, power up. Oh, yes, look at the bullets on that. Okay, right, let's quit out of this one. It's actually working. It's so good. So good. So this, this shows that it can work. It's taken a lot of time, but it can work. Right, let's try a bit of The Simpsons. It's because this is a slightly more advanced game. You've got to understand just like how amazing this looked back when it came out. That is incredible. Right, let's just give the game a quick go. Marge. Oh, I think I can only play as Marge because this came as a four player cabinet and you s sort of put the coins in which player you wanted to be. But as I've only got one player set up, that player is Marge. That's fine by me. Look at it. Oh, no, Maggie. So this is like a side-scrolling beat-em-up game where uh, Marge is using her hoover. Come on, guys. Feminism. It's so good, it just plays like the real thing. 
So the incredible thing about all of this is I'm literally just itching the surface. I'm not even scratching it, I'm itching the surface because there are literally thousands of games available. There's like thousands of arcade games available in that emulator alone. And then you think about all the consoles and all the other little gaming systems that it supports. So there's just gonna be a whole world of gaming in this tiny little Raspberry Pi. And then as I say, the actual machine itself will be able to support actual arcade boards. The journey has been difficult because it's been really tricky to get it all set up. Like I mentioned at the start, you, there's so much you haven't seen because it, it just wasn't working. And there's been a lot today that I've not shown you because it's just not worked. It's just insanely difficult. But I think this is going to be the hardest part, hopefully. <laughs> So, I do, I will need your help for the project. I did say in the last video, I'll talk about it in this video, but I think this has been going on for far too long. So I'll save it for the next video. And I think in the next video, what we're gonna have to do is plan out the build and exactly what we need and sort of create a bit of a shopping list and try and work out how much it all costs and how it will work and maybe like draw some pictures and diagrams and just work it all out we've got the controls working we've got the emulation working now we've just got to build it into an arcade machine but we're heading in the right direction which is what we need right now so uh, yeah don't forget grab one of these t-shirts if you want one i'd much appreciate it come back for part three where we'll be working out what we need to build our arcade machine I hope you're enjoying this little series. I think it's going to be quite a long series in the end, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, please do drop a comment below and let me know what you think of it all, because that'd be really helpful. And if you've got any top tips or like arcade games you'd like me to try in an upcoming video, let me know and I will definitely do that. But I think that is it from me. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now it's game over.